If you have an LLM based system and want to start tweaking to make improvements, you're going to need a high quality and diverse evaluation data set. But hand labeling everything can be really tedious, so I'm going to show you a recipe that uses LLMs and embeddings to make the process fast and gives high quality results. If you like this type of content, you might be interested in my new course on building a local AI assistant where we implement a RAG system from scratch. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is going to be a multi-part series where this first video introduces the concepts and presents the recipe, and then subsequent videos will implement each piece. Let's get started. And the first concept we're going to define is a RAG system, because we're going to be building this evaluation data set in the context of a RAG system, but these principles apply more broadly. So RAG, what does that stand for? Retrieval Augmented Generation. In our traditional LLM setup, we have a user who writes a question or whatever their input is, and there's the system prompt. And the prompt is given to the LLM along with the question, and the LLM then generates the answer. The RAG system is similar, but it takes the user's query and is also routed to a search retrieval process where relevant results from some document corpus are found and given to the LLM as additional context to generate its answer. Hence the name, Retrieval Augmented Generation. We take retrieval results from a search-based system and we augment the information that we give the LLM to aid in its generation. Now, how do you build that RAG system? That's a separate topic, but at a high level, we have a bunch of documents, we separate them into chunks, and those chunks are passed through an embedding model. So then we have a document embedding for each one of our chunks. And we can do the same thing for our search query. We write our query, we pass it through the same embedding model. So now we have an embedding for our query and we have an embedding for every chunk in our document corpus. And what we want to do is search for the most relevant chunks to the current query. That's vector search. That's what a vector DB does. Of course, there are much more complicated setups. You can do hybrid search and all kinds of other tricks, but this is the basics. You have a, a search query that comes in, or, or a, sorry, a user request that comes in. We run it through the search process, generate retrieval results, and send them into the LLM for additional context. But you'll notice this system has a, a lot of different components. First of all, we have to take a document corpus and chunk it up. There's lots of options to do there, different chunking strategies, different parameters to how big the chunks want to be if you want them to overlap many, many decisions to make. We also have the embedding model that embeds our chunks and our query. And there's many different embedding models. You may be familiar with some of the leaderboards like MTEB that have just a whole ecosystem of open source models. So which one do you choose, right? And then you have all the questions around retrieval. Do you want three, the top three results, the top five results? Do you want to use some similarity threshold? Do you want to use hybrid search instead of just vector search? What do you want to do to fuse results in that case? Many different choices to make. And then with generation, you have things like temperature and, and uh, other parameters associated with actually using the LLM. So with such a complicated system, how can you make progress by knowing that when you make a change to the embedding model that your RAG system is doing better or not, because you might have a handful of queries that you try, but you're not systematically evaluating it. Well, the answer, of course, is you need a high quality data set to do that evaluation. Once you have a high quality data set that's diverse and represents the types of use cases you expect from your system, then you can confidently evaluate it and therefore optimize that system. Without that data set, it's very hard to do it unless you're just relying on vibes, basically. But as you know, it's non-trivial to get a high quality labeled data set for your particular domain. Sure, there's all kinds of open source data sets, but to have one that's tailor made for your application area is quite difficult to get. And human labeling is very expensive and tedious. So how do we do this? Well, the answer, of course, is more LLMs. 
Let me explain. The idea is that intelligent sampling and the use of LLMs will get us where we need to be. And there's four main steps. It's clustering, sampling, LLM pair generation, and then LLM virtual judge. So let's dive deeper into each of these. First, let's talk about clustering. Recall from our RAG system design, we have this normal flow where you have a document corpus, you split those into document chunks, and each chunk gets an embedding with some embedding model. So that's nothing new. That's just the RAG system. That's what goes into the vector database to power the semantic search. But if we take those embeddings and we run a clustering algorithm on top, k-means, dbscan, choose your favorite, then what we've done is we've grouped together those that are close in the embedding space. And the whole point of the embedding model is for things that are semantically similar, things that mean the same thing, are close together in that space and will therefore end up in the same cluster if we do clustering effectively. So what we're doing is we're segmenting our space and finding all the diverse things that are there. And for things that are the same, we put together. So now each of our clusters, if done well, will represent a topic, an idea, something that represents a meaningful chunk of our space. In this plot, you see a bunch of document embeddings for papers where the color indicates the topic or the category. And the point here is that Papers from the same category are close together. And that's what we expect from a high quality embedding model is that things that represent the same sort of stuff are close together in that space. And if they're not, then you probably need to choose a different embedding model. Next, let's talk about sampling. So we have our clusters. Now the point is we want to take points out of each one of our clusters. This is different from randomly sampling our data. The reason we want to sample from each cluster is because we've identified these are the major topics inside of all, all of our data, right? And we want a diverse representation of all of our data. Now, if we just took a random sample of points, note that some of these clusters are very large and some are very small. And the chance that you would randomly get a point in one of these tiny clusters is very low. But by sampling from each cluster deliberately, we make sure that we get representation across the full embedding space. And that's the point. That's how we get a diverse evaluation data set. And that's why this is efficient, because first we cluster, and then we take a small number of points from each cluster. Next, let's talk about LLM QA generation. So we have our document chunks that came from our documents. They have pieces of text in them. We've clustered. We've sampled some of those points from our clusters. Now let's take one of those chunks, give it to an LLM, and say, create question-answer pairs where the question requires that chunk to get the answer. And that becomes part of our evaluation data set. So you're asking the LLM to create a question that is answerable by that chunk. And then it also gives you the answer. And that is how you're using LLMs to generate your data set. And you can do something a little bit cooler than that. You can say, I want you to generate three examples, but I want some diversity. I want some to require reasoning. I want others to be more about factual recall, whatever the case may be, different difficulty levels. But ask the LLM to write out for each example it generates which one of those choices it made and record that as metadata that you can tag to that example. The reason you want to do this is because then you can evaluate your system with a more fine tooth comb. So let's say some examples are about reasoning and other examples are just factual recall. Well, it might turn out your system is better at one than the other. And by having that metadata, you can slice and dice the data and say, OK, my system gets 80% accuracy when it's just about factual recall and 60% accuracy with reasoning. So I need to figure out how to do better reasoning. Maybe I choose uh, the latest deep seek model or whatever. So that's the next level of what you can do tag with metadata. How do we use this for evaluating retrieval? 
because our rag system has both the retrieval piece and the generation piece. Well, for the retrieval evaluation, we don't actually need the answer. We just need the chunk and the question that was derived from that chunk. Because the only thing we're checking is when we give our rag system this question, which was generated by the LLM, the chunk that should be returned by our retrieval system should be the chunk we used to generate that question. And that's exactly how you evaluate the system. You pass in the question as if it's a user query. You look at the search results and you figure out what rank in my search results is the chunk that was actually used to create this question. Let's talk through the workflow real quick. We have a chunk. We used an LLM to generate a question and an answer. For evaluating retrieval, we don't actually need the answer, so we'll ignore that. The question is then sent to the retrieval part of our RAG system. So that means we have to first pass it through the embedding model and then do our search retrieval process and generate results. So then we take those results and compare it to the original chunk to figure out where in the search results is the chunk that was used to create this question in the first place. And that's how we evaluate. Now let's talk about LLM as a virtual judge. The idea here is we have two answers. One is from our RAG system, and another is from our evaluation data set. So remember, we took the LLM in the last step, gave it a chunk, and generated a question and an answer. So that answer that we have is our ground truth answer, we're calling it. And now we're going to take the question, give it to our entire RAG system, which will generate an answer, and that's our RAG answer. And we're going to ask an LLM, here's the answer from our RAG system, here's the ground truth answer, how good of a job did our RAG system do? And you can define the criteria and what you want to evaluate, the coherence and completeness and accuracy and all that stuff. But the idea is pretty simple. Here's my RAG answer, here's my ground truth answer, how well did I do? You be the judge. So let's talk through the workflow here. Recall from the last step, we took a chunk, we generated a question answer pair. That's our starting point. With the question, we can now feed that to our end-to-end -end RAG system, which for our purposes at this stage is just a black box. Under the hood, it's doing the thing where it runs it through the embedding model, it runs a search process with the vector DB or whatever the case may be. It injects that into an LLM and generates an answer. All we care about is the output, which is the final answer. We then take our starting answer from our evaluation QA pair and our RAG answer that we just generated. We put them together into an LLM with this new prompt telling it how to judge it. And that's our output. So now when we want to evaluate our RAG system end to end, we do this process where we feed in the question and then compare the answers. So that's it. That's the recipe. We run clustering on top of our document chunk embeddings. We then sample from those clusters to make sure we have a diverse representation across the full embedding space. And with those samples, we start generating question answer pairs, which we can use to evaluate the retrieval ability of our RAG system. And then we can also use those question answer pairs to evaluate the quality of our RAG system answers in an end-to-end -end fashion. Once you have this evaluation data set, you can really take a microscope to what's going on. So what I mean by that is, let's say cluster three performs really well, but cluster seven is not performing well. Well, why is that? What is cluster seven? What's it about? But knowing that cluster seven has poor performance, you can start asking follow-up questions, like do I need to split this cluster and maybe um, for these cases I do something different or special, or maybe I have a dedicated prompt just for this cluster. Or maybe I do some few shot examples from cluster seven um, that really help guide the LLM to know what to do given this context. Lots of different options, but the point is you'll know what thread to pull on, what to follow up with. Likewise, if you tag these with metadata, so that these points are about reasoning, these points are about factual recall, so on and so forth. It gives you another lens to view your evaluation, which 
helps you make more targeted decisions. It also helps you see the consequences that, okay, when I use this embedding model, these metrics go up on these points, but these go down. And now I can make a, a better trade-off decision. So this is the power given to you once you have a high-quality, diverse evaluation data set. I hope this helps, and I will see you in the next video where I start to implement this and work through an example.